welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video on the Dior fragrances. I did a video the other year I think on Chanel fragrances, ranking them, I'll leave it linked below and I thought I would do the same for Dior. So I'm going to go through all the perfumes that are currently available from Dior and give them a ranking of the ones that I think are worth the money and the ones that I think aren't and should be avoided. <music> If you're new here then hello and welcome. I am all about perfumes, I have hundreds of videos like this. I do have detailed videos on all the perfumes I'm going to talk about, going through like the Mysterio range, the Poison range, so you can check those out for more information and as always I'll leave the links down below to where you can get these perfumes around the world and as always in the description box as well you can find the link to my website SokiLondon.com where I have a blog that has an article on all the different discontinued Mysterio perfumes and the discontinued Poison perfumes as well and of course there you can get my fragrances Empress Aphrodite and my super concentrated Soy Wax Candle and Empress was actually inspired by the discontinued Misty or Cherie. Cool, so I guess the one that we see the most in advertising from Dior is their Misty or range uh, with Natalie Portman as the face of the fragrance and there's quite a few in the range now and it can be quite confusing because they keep changing the fragrances and the bottles a bit as well. So if I rank the Misty or fragrances and I have a few of them here, personally the one one that I'm gonna put last is Misty or Eau de Toilette. So this actually um, kind of upsets me because I actually really like the smell of Misty or Eau de Toilette. It's a really fresh like blood orange. I love that blood orange note. It's just a little bit more interesting than a traditional orange note with some fresh florals underneath. But the thing is, it's really, really light. An Eau de Toilette usually has up to 5% fragrance oil concentration. I don't know, you know, brands don't publish their concentration levels, but I suspect that this is below, well below five, because I find it lasts less than half an hour. And I love the smell, and when I see it in store, I'll spray it on me, and I love that initial burst, and then it's literally just gone. And considering this starts at about 60 something pounds, I just think you can get so much better fragrances for your money that actually last and you can smell on yourself. So that's gonna be my bottom one for the Misty Or range. Next, I'm gonna put a second to bottom Misty Or Eau de Parfum, the core fragrance. I have it here in a miniature. So Misty Or Eau de Parfum started out as Misty Or Cherie, which was strawberry, rose, patchouli, and a popcorn note, and that inspired my Empress perfume that has the same notes. That was discontinued and replaced with Miss Dior Eau de Parfum, which still had some echo of that original Miss Dior Cherie that I loved. And then, was it two years ago? They totally changed it, re-released it with this fabric bow rather than the metal bow, and they totally changed the fragrance. And now it's a very light sort of lily of the valley, white floral. It's pretty and everything, but to me, the performance is like an eau de toilette, not like an eau de parfum. And again, you're looking at spending like hundred and something pounds on something that's just quite a generic, pretty simple white floral perfume. Again, you can get such better fragrances for like half that price. And it doesn't have that exciting DNA of the Misty or Cherie and the Misty or Parfum that made that such a great perfume. So that's my second worst. So third, I'm gonna put Misty or Blooming Bouquet. Now again, this used to be a one that I really liked. It was a peony, really crisp peony floral, very fresh fragrance. They reformulated it last year. Again, now it has this fabric bow and this now has changed to be a sweet pea fragrance. Now, I actually love the scent of sweet pea and there's not many sweet pea perfumes out there. It really is like a sweet floral, really refreshing, nice for spring. However, it's an eau de toilette. So it does not have that lasting power at all. Again, I find this lasts a little bit better than the Miss Dior Eau de Toilette, but it's still, we're talking less than an hour. I would suggest 
really something like Versace Bright Crystal, you're gonna get much better value for money. So I love the scent, I just want it to, I wanna be able to smell it when I bought it, you know? I'm also gonna put here Miss Dior Rose and Roses. Now this is a really pretty refreshing rose. Rose kind of runs through the Miss Dior line and rose sometimes can be associated with old fashioned perfumes like a musty powdery rose, but Miss Dior Rose and Roses is not like that. It's very refreshing, it has some kind of fresh citrus opening. I find it does kind of last but again it's an eau de toilette so again there are loads better rose perfumes out there. I have a video on the top 10 rose perfumes so you can get a very similar smell that lasts much better as well but it is a pretty scent which is why it's coming higher up the order. Next I'm gonna say Miss Dior Rose Essence. I'm not sure if this is like a limited edition, but it does seem, it's still on their website. So maybe it will disappear when they've sold all their bottles. This one actually does have some staying power. Um, but what I was shocked about is it's totally different to the Misty or perfumes in the rest of the range. It's got an ambery, oriental, incense vibe to it. And the bottle, you know, has pink liquid in, all the packaging, everything looks just like the other Misty Ors. Then you spray it and it's almost, it's like something from the poison range, like totally different. Maybe they're trying to appeal to a Middle Eastern market with this, I don't know. But it's come, it's not a perfume that I personally like, but I've put it higher up because it does have some lasting power you're getting a little bit better value for money next I have missed your absolutely blooming which is discontinued but some websites do still have some bottles so I will leave the links below to where I found it around the world for people that do still have sell it. This one is an Eau de Parfum and you've got lots of berry notes in which I love. Kind of a bit echoey of the original Misty or Cherie and it just has much more staying power. It's stronger, even the liquid is a darker purple. It was really nice and I'm so sad they discontinued it. I wonder if they will re-release it with these new fabric bows. I don't know. I'm hoping they do. And then my top recommendation from the Misty or range is the new release that came out um, I think in February, Miss Dior Parfum. This one definitely has echoes of Miss Dior Cherie and in fact when I went to smell it and buy it at Harrods where I got this, as I was approaching the counter I immediately got that reminiscent smell and it's, it genuinely smelled just like Empress. I thought there was someone nearby wearing my Empress or something because it has that same patchouli, rose, strawberry combination. It's definitely a proper chic perfume which is what the Miss Dior perfume used to be, uh, the Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. So it has some similarities with Coco Mademoiselle as well. It is more expensive than all the others. I think this 30ml was £69 and I think it is more concentrated than an Eau de Parfum as well. So you do actually get a few hours out of this. It is much better value for money but it is more expensive as well. It's definitely the best for lasting of all the Miss Dior perfumes and it definitely just has more power and presence than the others as well which all most of the others feel like very light springtime type perfumes whereas this one feels like something you could actually wear during the day and you know you'd only need to top it up maybe in the afternoon and um, so definitely like this new release from the range except for the price and that's my top ranking of the Miss Dior perfumes. So next if we move on to Dior Joy. So this new um, perfume, like new range, came out a few years ago with Jennifer Lawrence as the face of the fragrance, lots of advertising. I was super excited that Dior were making a whole new range of perfumes. I have to say the original Dior Joy is to me such a letdown. It's quite a boring fragrance and quite generic. You've basically got an opening of citrus notes and then a musky jasmine and rose underneath. Like that combination is in so many fragrances like florals with a fresh citrus opening. It's really like unimaginative and we'll go into some of the other Dior perfumes later which are so creative and like iconic. I just found Dior Joy just so boring. They then released Dior Joy in 
Intense, which is much better. And for me, performs like an eau de parfum, whereas Original Dior Joy performs like an eau de toilette. It has that same citrus opening with jasmine and rose, but they've added in a vanilla undertone and a warm tonka bean. It's not overly sweet, but these new notes really add depth and body and add some lasting power to the fragrance, making it like my favorite thing, bit better value for money. I do still think there are loads of other perfumes you could get instead of both the Dior Joys that have better lasting power. But this one, if you're gonna get a Dior Joy, I definitely recommend the Intense over the Original. And Dior Joy Original, I would put really towards the bottom of all the Dior perfumes. So if we then move on to Dior Addict, this one has been around for quite a while. Dior Addict Eau de Parfum is a really great like strong vanilla perfume. It has a slight powderiness to it that reminds me of like Play-Doh and I do love the smell of Play-Doh. It's a great like autumn winter perfume, a little bit sexy and um, definitely good for lasting and definitely one of the better value for money ones. And the prices of this haven't gone up as much as things like Miss Dior and Joy have. There is then an Eau Fresh version of this, which is totally different. It's um, like zesty, like grapefruit, opening, citrus opening with Lily of the Valley and Freesia at the heart. So it is a little bit like Misty or Eau de Parfum, the new version, but it's much better priced. It's better value for money. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets discontinued because they just really don't push the Dior Addict range. It's not really a big thing for them. But if you're looking for something light and fresh, this is better value for money than the light Miss Dior perfumes. And they also have a Dior Addict Eau de Toilette, which is very lemony and orangey and a little bit green underneath as well. It uses a Neroli note, which is from an orange blossom tree. And then you've got Jasmine in, which helps give it some lasting power power and a hint of vanilla so it's kind of a little bit like Dior Joy Intense but again a little bit better value for money. It doesn't quite have the sweetness in of Dior Joy Intense. The vanilla in it is very subtle and nothing like the strength that's in the original Dior Addict Eau de Parfum. So if we then move on to the Dior Poison range. So original Dior Poison is an iconic perfume from the 80s. It's really heavy as the bottle and name like would make you expect. You've got notes of incense in there. There's also a sort of fruity plummy deep plum note in there but there's definitely a spiciness from cinnamon, cardamom. It's a very typical 80s fragrance kind of like original black opium um, those real like powerhouse um, sort of shoulder pad fragrances from the 80s. If you do like your incense, more oriental perfumes, this is a great fragrance and I love the bottle, it's so unique. They do actually also sell it in an extract de parfum, which is even stronger, more intense if you don't find poison strong enough. But this one is actually quite different. It doesn't have the incense in it, instead it's more tuberose with like spicy um, notes from a coriander. It's not quite as complex and it is like a different scent. And and I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets discontinued as well. So we then have Pure Poison that comes in the white bottle. This is a good jasmine perfume. When I smell this on people, like it, I can definitely smell it on them. It has good lasting power. If you like your strong jasmine perfumes like Mugler's Alien, I think you'll like this. And it also has some nice orangey notes in there with orange blossom and a bit of gardenia. So it's quite pretty, but it still has this powerhouse jasmine note in it, which help like makes it belong to the poison line so it's like it wants to be light and pretty but then it's got all this strength to it as well definitely an underrated jasmine perfume jasmine is in so many new releases like the past few years like big sellers packer about fame the valentino perfumes like everyone is doing jasmine at the moment and I, if you like that those fragrances i definitely recommend checking out pure poison we then have hypnotic poison which is probably the strongest heaviest perfume from Dior. It comes in an Eau de Toilette and an Eau de Parfum version and it is a super sweet vanilla, peach, almond fragrance. Very, very sexy, nighttime, intense fragrance. Reminds me of something that like you'd wear in like the Moulin Rouge or something. I find it overpowering. I think it's been reformulated over the years and it's not quite as heavy as it used to be, but it's still really strong. And it's also quite similar to Dolce & Gabbana, the one. So if you like that, 
this one is like the same but heavier um, but you have to really want to stand out to wear this it's really really strong we then have the poison girl range which came out um, much more recently than the iconic original poison perfumes my favorite from these is the dior poison girl eau de parfum it's a really nice orange perfume if you like things like dolce and gabbana forever those really orangey perfumes i think you like this but it does have a sweet vanilla tonka bean note in it kind of a bit like joy intense but a bit stronger and to me that combination of the sweet and the orange gives it kind of like a candied orange feel which i actually really like kind of like a lighter version of dolce and gabbana devotion acro baked those really lemony vanilla perfumes this is like an orange vanilla and then the eau de toilette version i actually prefer the scent of this it's got caramel with the orange and um, kind of a little bit like victor and rolf bonbon i really like the scent but it doesn't have the lasting power of being an eau de toilette such a shame and um, but it's like this candied orange i really like that again a little bit like devotion and then they have poison girl unexpected which i just checked and it's not on the dior website here in the uk so i don't know if that's been discontinued but it seems to be on like every other website this one is a little bit like miss dior eau de toilette in that it has that blood orange top note but then we've got that vanilla undertone that runs through the Dior Poison Girl range. Um, again, it's an eau de toilette, I think, and it's not that strong. I prefer the Poison Girl eau de toilette to Poison Girl Unexpected. And yeah, it looks like this one will probably be discontinued. So in terms of ranking the poison ones, I would say original Dior Poison is iconic and strong and so is Hypnotic Poison. So I put them at joint top because they're great value for money, they're really strong, they're iconic, they're unique perfumes that have been around for like over 30 years because they're good. Then I put Pure Poison, again it's a really good perfume. Then I would put Poison Girl, then Poison Girl Eau de Toilette, then Poison Girl unexpected. So we then move on to the J'adore range. Now original J'adore is a really pretty white floral, lots of lilies in here, jasmine again, and it has a unique melon note which really makes this something a little bit different with not many perfumes that have melon in them and it is a good perfume my mum used to wear this i think when it first came out um so whenever i smell it i do think of her and it is pretty and it does have pretty good lasting power i'm gonna put the original loaded parfum as like second best for me the best one is j'adore infinissimi the reason being this one is just a little bit um, better for lasting and a little bit more interesting it has tuberose added to it and you get this creamy sandalwood in the base it just feels like a little bit more maybe something you could wear at night time whereas original j'adore i would say is probably more a daytime perfume but you could wear it throughout the year j'adore would also be nice like in the office it's very versatile fragrance then the infinissimi one is just something a little bit extra a little bit different it also has quite a lot of ylang ylang in if you like the smell of ylang ylang and then third i'm gonna put j'adore la or which came out last year for me this smells very similar to original j'adore it just doesn't have that melon top note so it's basically just like a nice jasmine perfume it's not very interesting and not really necessary if you have one of the other shadows but the lasting power is kind of the same as the original so I'm putting it third. Fourth I'm going to put J'adore Eau de Toilette. This is a pretty fragrance and I find it performs better than some of the other Dior Eau de Toilettes. It really majors on um, orange blossom and orange along with the signature jasmine scent of the original. It's very fresh, pretty, um, kind of a, literally like a summertime version of J'adore. And then lastly I'm going to put the J'adore Parfum de Eau, the water perfume that's alcohol free this one has um some green notes at it it's, it's very like fresh green garden take on the original jasmine note of j'adore it's very light and i found it disappeared pretty quickly on me and for the price i really don't want something that's going to disappear that quick the reason why we put alcohol in perfumes is because it evaporates and like makes the smell 
evaporate with it so you get that smell. Using it like an alcohol-free perfume means that you don't get that same projection. So I just think it's a bit an unnecessary addition that's just not good value for money. And the bottle kind of looks like an alien egg. So there are a few other um, Dior perfumes. They have this Cruise collection which came in these long tall bottles that were really beautiful and they used to be very affordable. When I worked in a shop um, like 12 years ago, a perfume shop, there was about five of these and I think they were maybe like 50 pounds, 60 pounds, which for like a hundred mil. So they were really good value. They've discontinued all of them except for Escal a Portofino, which is an aromatic citrus perfume. Dior don't really have many aromatic fragrances. This one is quite unisex. You've got juniper berries, cypress, those really like green outdoor scents, along with lots of fresh lemon notes and orange blossom. So very much one of the sort of fresh daytime scents you could wear when you're out in Portofino and it does feel pretty unisex. I see now they come in a 75 mil and it's still only 82 pounds so it is pretty good value for money compared to the other big Dior perfumes, Mistyor, Joy, Jador um, and it sort of tends to be like hidden at the back of the Dior counter. They do still make Dior June which is one of their older fragrances that still very much has its fan club. Unfortunately they now only make it in an eau de toilette. This is like a woody, spicy, um, sort of 90s type perfume and they used to do eau de parfum eau de toilette, now they just do eau de toilette um, and I think this is one that's bought by people that have been wearing it for years. It's not particularly modern um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it gets discontinued and the same with Dior Dolce Vita which again now only comes in an eau de toilette. It has this very unique like polka dot type bottle, but again, it's quite a dated scent with a lot of cinnamon. Um, it's been around for a really long time, one of the classic Dior fragrances. And I see now it's over hundred pounds for the hundred mil. So they've really hyped the price up on this. I definitely think June and Dolce Vita will get discontinued. So it's really all the main Dior fragrances. They do have their private collection, collection privé that I do have a video on and they have their collections de Monsieur Dior which I haven't smelt for ages those are really I mean there's a lot to go on there isn't there so personally like overall ranking I would say that the Dior poison ones the classic ones are the best fragrances that Dior make in terms of projection iconicness uniqueness value for money but I know that like poison hypnotic poison are not for everyone I think if you're looking for something a little bit more mainstream then Miss Dior Parfum the new one is the best of the Miss Dior and the Jador collection are really good original or the infinissimi one would also be top ranked up there for me and then I'd say I'd go into poison girl and Dior Joy Intense would be next. I would say all the eau de toilettes from Dior are too expensive for what you get. Unless you really love the fragrance, you can get the same smell from other brands for a lot less money. So that's it guys. Let me know what your favorite is. What would you rank as like your top five Dior perfumes? Let me know in the comments. And I know of course they have lots of discontinued ones like uh, Midnight Poison, uh, Tender Poison, of course Miss Dior Cherie. Um, so let me know what your favorite discontinued ones are as well. But that's it guys. All links in the description where you can get them. And that's it. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.